Hi, how are you doing? I'm Mohammad Sadri, postdoctoral researcher at Electrical Engineering Department of TU Kaiserslautern. This is uh, lesson number nine, video section two of lesson number nine, and the lesson is about software development for Xilinx Zinc using Xilinx software development kit environment. As I described in the video of in fact section one there are different methods that you can use and develop software for the ARM host which is available on the Xilinx Zinc device and as of the most simple method and the um, direct way to do programming for the ARM host um, you can use the Xilinx SDK so as I described in the previous section, what we are going to do, we will design this architecture on the hardware for the Xilinx Zinc using Vivado environment. And then after we realize this architecture and we created the beta stream, we will go ahead to the software development kit environment and we will write the code to configure this XIDMA module and also this or these GPIO modules so that the data can be transferred from the PL part of the zinc which contains these modules to the DRAM memory so that the ARM host later can read the DRAM memory and process the data. So in this lesson practically we are going to show you the most basic technique of sharing data between the hardware that you have on the PL and the ARM host that you have on the PS of the Xilinx Zinc device. Okay, let's get started. So I have the command prompt here and I make it a little bit bigger and I have my um, in fact directory structure as before as all of I, my, my other videos as you have seen we have the downloads for Dell we have the my cores we have SDK and Vivado and inside Vivado we will do our hardware design and inside SDK we will run in fact the Xilinx software development kit and we will develop, develop our code so here I am inside Vivado, inside Vivado folder I, I just run the Vivado command and if in fact environment variables are not set I will set them that's absolutely no problem so we run the Vivado and then um, create new project you know all of these very well right now better than me so I go ahead for the board I select Z board since in this lesson we are going to practically evaluate our design on the Z board and to check if the design that we make is really working or not and if it is not working we will debug the design to see where is the problem so I select the Z board and the Z board is based on Xilinx 7020 device. So I continue, finish. Okay, we have the environment here, and the point is in this video, I am using actually the block that I have designed already in lesson 7. So if you go back and look at lesson 7, in lesson 7, I am designing an XI stream block using Verilog R RTL and I am directly going to use that block here inside the design of lesson 9. So, if you don't know or you have not watched lesson 7, I think it is important to watch lesson 7 as well as lesson 8 because lesson 8 contains a brief description on the architecture of Xilinx Zinc device and if you don't know that maybe it is good to go and have a very brief look also at lesson 8. 
So the first step is I import the repository that contains this core, this IP block that I have developed before into the current project in my Vivado environment. I go ahead with tools, project settings, IP, add repository. And actually the design that I have done in lesson seven is in, inside the downloads for the folder. If you have watched lesson seven, you know XIS underline example folder and inside my course folder inside IP repo, I have the design that I have created in lesson seven. So here is our IP block and we just add this repository to our Vivado project. And now this repository is added. I come to create block design. I create a new block design. And then here I add the IP blocks that I want to the block design. So here sample generator is the block that I have designed myself using Verilog RTL, XI DMA. And here when I search for XI DMA, I have described this before. We have XI central direct memory access. We have XI direct memory access and we have XI video direct memory access and this one is the one that we want right now. I will describe each of these guys later in later videos. So for now, for conversion from XI stream to XI memory map and for copying the data from an XI stream source to the DRAM memory, this is the component that can come handy. So. I add this guy here and I have actually described the configuration, the basic configuration that we perform for this guy <coughs> in lesson seven. So I double click on this and for now we don't want the scatter gather mode and we don't want the read channel. We have just write channel because we want to transfer data from in fact our stream side to our memory map side, but we don't have the reverse direction. The reverse direction is to transfer the data from the memory map side to the stream side, okay? But I don't want this direction. I'm just writing to memory. So this is the configuration that I can have. I just press okay. So this is the block. This is sample generator and then the zinc itself, the zinc PS. So the zinc PS is also added and as soon as you add the zinc PS, the first thing that you do, you run block automation. So run block automation, processing system seven, just press okay. And then the point is now for processing system seven, I want to transfer data from here, from this port, in fact, to the DRAM memory. So as of the descriptions that I had to you during lesson eight, I should enable one of the, one of the XI slave ports that the PS has. So I double click here, PS PL configuration, and HP slave XI interface and I enable HP zero. Okay, the HP zero port is now enabled and later I will be able to connect this guy to this guy. Okay, one other point is that as I have described to you in the previous section, whenever XI DMA finishes with an transfer task it generates an interrupt and i want the arm host to see this interrupt and to understand this interrupt so that whenever the interrupt is received by the arm host it reprogram the xi dma okay so i want this interrupt line that i have here on the output of xi dma to be connected to the interrupt input of the arm host that I have here on the Xilinx Zinc device.
so I double click here and interrupts fabric interrupts I enable them PLPS interrupt ports and then there are a set of input ports to which you can connect the interrupts which are generated by the logic on the PL and I just enable this option meaning that these ports will now be enabled for the logic that you have on the PL and then I press OK and actually when I begin connecting the interrupt lines to this port as far as I remember the first one will use this interrupt line then the next one will use the next interrupt line and this continues up but this is something we can evaluate and try later to see if it is interrupt number 61 or it is interrupt number 91 but I think it begins from 61 okay so now I have also the IRQ F2P interrupt input of the arm host here so I can connect this guy to this guy and the interrupt is ready and what I should do else is that our sample generator the axi stream master port that I have on the sample generator should also get connected to the axi stream slave port that I have on the axi DMA so I make this connection these two axi stream ports are now connected and the important point is that if you look at the name of these signals they will be one by one automatically get connected to their corresponding signals so T data to D data T strobe it doesn't have any equivalent here it is on the fly it will not be connected to anywhere T last T last T ready T ready T valid T valid and for T strobe I am not really worried because right now all of the transfers that I want to do from sample generator to axon DMA they are 32 bits transferred I mean whenever I transfer every bit of data I am sure that all of the bytes of that bit of data are going to be transferred and they are all valid and the T keep signal that I have here I make sure that all of the bits of this signal are connected to one so I insert a constant block into into my block design and then I double click and I make the widths of this guy the same as the widths of this guy so it will be four bits four bits and all of the bits they should be one and then I press OK and I just make this connection and now I am sure that the data is transferring correctly from this port to this port maybe one other solution was and I am not sure but maybe it was possible also to just connect T strobe to T keep I don't know okay now for the ports that I have here in the input of sample generator frame size enable and XI enable I want to be able to drive them in fact through the arm host that I have here on the Xilinx Zinc device or at least I want to be able in fact to control the enable and the frame size through my arm host that I have here so for this one actually enable let's connect it just to zero because I don't want it and this XI slave port that I have here I don't want to use I want this module 
to begin generating samples for itself I don't want to connect this one to anywhere okay so for now I make this connection and I say I don't want the Axel slave here to be enabled and then I have the enable signal and the frame size and I want to drive their value through the arm host that I have here so I add two Axi GPIO modules to my design Axi GPIO Axi GPIO Axi GPIO yeah and one of these Axi GPIOs I use to drive frame size and the other I use to drive the enable signal so the width of this one should be 1 because actually that is one, a 1 bit signal so the width of this GPIO is 1 I make the connection between the output port of the GPIO and the enable signal and the width of this one should be 8 so 8 okay and then I have the connection here okay and then there are, there's this point that now you have several set of Axi memory mapped slave ports which should be driven indeed by the arm host that you have here so uh, for connecting these Axi memory mapped slave ports to the Xilinx Zinc device I use run connection automation which is actually kind of very clever so run connection automation and then this Axi DMA has also one Axi slave light interface through which you program the Axi DMA with the arm host so run connection automation for this port I want to make it connected to the GP0 port of the Zinc PS so I press OK OK this connection is now there it is made OK through ob ob obviously through an Axi interconnect so I have the GP0 port of the zinc comes to an axi interconnect the output of axi interconnect enters the axi stream slave light interface of axi dma unit and then we continue also for these two guys and so i have this axi slave port i want it to be a slave port for gp0 Again, there is this Axi slave port. I want it to connect to, G, to GP0. And for these, these, these are not important. The other important point is that now the HP0 port, the HP0 port of the Zinc PS should get connected to this master port that I have here. So run connection automation, HP0 port, and the master. Vivado has recognized the master automatically it will be MXIS2MM MXIS2MM okay so now here I have MXIS2MM it comes to an XI interconnect and then from the XI interconnect if we follow we will reach the HP0 port let's clear up the block diagram that we have created up to this point and let's make sure that all of the clock and reset signals are connected okay this, this, they, they seem to be okay but for the sample generator I need to connect this set of signals manually so I do the connections so for clock I connect 
the clock port that I have to the clock port that I have here clock and then another clock also and then for reset port I connect it just to this reset that I have here reset and also reset okay I think I we have made all of the required connections so this axle enable currently I am driving with zero because as far as I remember from the design that we created in lesson 7 when the signal is 1 actually the data which is here will be passed to XI output and this is not what I want right now I want the module to begin generating samples for itself and to put those samples with frame size intervals on the MXI master stream port so this is I have I have driven with zero this is I have driven with all one this is the T keep signal and in fact T strobe and T keep signals they are responsible for indicating when you are transferring a bit a piece of data which bytes in this piece of data they are valid and with this configuration I am saying all of the bytes are valid and then yeah and then we had these XI GPIO units and as I showed you they are slaves for the ARM host and they are responsible in fact for driving suitable configuration values for our sample generator so I clear the block diagram again here is our final design let's save it and go to the next step as you remember the next step is to right click here create HDL wrapper let Vivado manage wrapper and auto update yeah I have a set of warnings and actually these warnings are related to the Axoi stream slave port that I have here for sample generator unit so here on the sample generator unit I have this Axoi slave stream port that is flying that is, that, is, that is not connected to anywhere okay and the warnings they were related to this port they are not important so again I come here right click and next step generate output products okay the output products or indeed the code which should be compiled which should be synthesized is now generated completely and I can go in fact through the rest of the flow the next step is to run synthesis after that run implementation and then generate bit stream and after we generated the bit stream our bit stream is ready this means the FPGA part is ready we can go to the software part to the PS part so I just pause the video and then I press generate bit stream which will result in running synthesis implementation and bit stream generation steps one after another and then I resume recording the video okay now the generation of the bit stream is finished and actually bit stream generation completed and now you have several options you can open implemented design view report or open hardware manager and actually all of these items they are very useful and I will describe about each of them later but not now so for now I just press cancel and in fact when you do synthesis there are a set of settings for the synthesis and when you do implementation again there are a set of settings for the implementation and for now I have left all of the settings in their own default mode I didn't change anything but later I will show you sometimes we need to make some custom changes in some parts of the flow
so but for now everything was default and it is completely fine for us at the moment so I have the design implemented the video stream is generated and now it is really time to export this design to the SDK environment and to begin developing the code for the PS part of the Zinc device so right now I come to the file menu export export hardware for SDK and what do you want to export in fact this is the top level of our design this is in fact the unit that contains all of our hardware including the PS the PS is also a part of this hardware so it includes the hardware that you have on the PL and also includes the hardware that you have on the PS and I want to export this platform that I have created to in fact the SDK folder so XI DMASG and SDK folder okay so I don't need the downloads anymore SDK folder and again for this one workspace for in fact Xilinx software development environment I want to be again the SDK folder and I want to launch the SDK after the export is finished so I do this configuration and press OK what is happening during exporting the hardware for SDK indeed as you design your hardware you are specifying a set of important parameters for different units of your design and for each of these units you are also defining some set of configurations and when you begin coding in fact on the ARM host and when you want to run an application on the ARM host these parameters and these configurations may be needed during export all of these parameters and these configurations will be exported to your software envir environment as a kind of header file and these header files you will include in your C code and you will use the constants that are defined in these header files during your code to access different pieces of hardware and to read or write their different configurations we will see this in action very soon but I want to you I want to give you a kind of better view of what I am talking about so here I have the Zinc PS when I double click on the Zinc PS actually this window pops up the window through which you can do a lot of configurations and actually many of these configurations they don't necessarily affect only your hardware but they also affect the software that will be running on the ARM host so the software should be kind of aware of those configurations for example one of them is the interrupts furthermore as I told you the PS of the Zinc device contains a very large number of configuration registers and each of these configuration registers is indicating the operation of one piece of hardware inside the Zinc PS for example if I double click here on the memory controller then you can see a set of settings for access to your DRAM memory 
For example, you have case latency, you have TRC, and the rest of the parameters. And actually, with these parameters, you are controlling the behavior of your, in fact, DRAM controller. And each of these parameters are, in fact, is, is in fact, a configuration register. And when you initialize the PS, when you boot up your Zinc device, you should indicate the values for each of these registers. So when I'm exporting the hardware from the Vivado environment to the software development kit, I am exporting all of these default configurations. So if you changed something here, for example, or you change something here, for example, in the PSPL configuration, then make sure that you export the new hardware to your software development environment. Because actually that change that you have made here should be also seen by the software which is running on the ARM host. Another important point that I should mention is that I have, as I have shown you several times, this is the block diagram that you have created. And along, along with this block diagram that you create, there are a set of addresses. So you have the address editor, and for example, you have processing system 7, and the processing system 7 has a set of XI slave memory mapped components. And each of these XI slave components, they have an address, an address range. Through this address and address range, we will access that component and we will, in fact, write to that component. We will configure it, we will read from it, we will see what is its status. So when you export your hardware from Vivado environment to the SDK environment, in fact, you are also exporting these address values which are extremely important when you want to develop your software for the ARM host. Because using these address values, we will understand to which location in the memory, if we access, we can write to our desired units in the hardware. So here is the SDK environment. And these are the first files that will be created for you automatically by the Vivado environment and actually these files are extremely important. I will go into detail of what are these files in the next section, in the next video and here for example as you see, you see the addresses for all of the components that you have in your system from the viewpoint of the first ARM core, from the viewpoint of the second ARM core. So these are all of the components. Every kind of component that can be accessed through an address range from the ARM host. This includes also the components that I have created for the system, the XI DMA and XI GPIO and also some other components that are part of the Zinc PS, basically. Okay, that is it for now. We have our hardware architecture kind of ready. We are not pretty sure if the hardware architecture is fully ready or it lacks something. Honestly speaking, I don't know as well. Maybe I have made a mistake. But actually, if I have made a mistake, it will be good because later we can come back and we can debug the hardware and identify the mistake. So, 
in the next video i will continue with the software development environment and we will begin in fact creating a simple program that we will run on the arm host okay i would like to remind you that you can always find the latest material related to my link training courses through the greenelectrons.com and googlia.com which are both my own websites i would like to thank daniel mastio and matthias dubon for sharing me providing me with vivado license and the zboard and also i would like to thank professor norbert vein and professor luca benini for supporting me uh, through time to create these videos that is it for now thanks for watching and see you in the next video